I thought my Bamboo Lab A1 Mini was already pretty cool. I decked it out with Lego Princess Leia gear, even called it Princess Leia. But then BQ offered to send me some of their Pandaverse range, and it got a lot cooler, like literally. Today I'm going to be showing you the Panda Cooler for the A1 and the Nomi 3D. Let's get into it. So we start off with my almost stock Bamboo Lab A1 Mini. So this is the one that I take to Comic Cons. I did it a bit of like a Star Wars Lego theme, thought that was pretty cool. But like I said, BQ offered to send me some of their Pandaverse range. They haven't paid me, they haven't seen this review beforehand or told me to say anything good. Just send me the products free of charge. You can read my review policy down below. Well, to start with the Panda Cooler A1, you can see it comes with the screws, some mounts, some wires, the USB-C power adapter, the 3D printed adapter for routing the cables along the sides, and the actual cooler itself, which is also 3D printed nicely, if I might add. And then RGB fan for underneath by the nozzle, and then the little bit at the top that goes around the cables. The instructions can be found if you scan the QR code on the box or if you just search the product on their site. It includes fully detailed instructions for installing all their products and any optional extras that you might need. So we start with the cooler, which involved taking this silly washer off. It, to be honest, this wasn't glued very well. I, I did have to just like place it on, but by the time you mount it, there was no issues. But the, the glue backing basically just didn't work. It was a bit fiddly to get on, but I did get it. Just be aware that the screws that come with this, there's a couple of different sets. So make sure you follow the instructions carefully. It did take me a second, but once I got the right screws and I switched my screwdriver rather than the one that was included, it was an easy install. The next step was you had to take the USB-C header out of the tool head. Didn't even know this was USB-C to be honest, never had gone this far into my A1 Mini, but I did eventually get it right off, pulled it out, I thought it was crazy that it was just USB-C. Slid this part on and then just clipped it into the little slots in the top of the tool head. I couldn't believe how well it just fit and it's definitely not going anywhere. You include their USB-C adapter then. This is so you can get a little bit more power out of it. So they're not having you wire it to any other external source or take up an AMS slot. You can just wire it straight from the tool head. Maybe they could have printed it in a color similar to the A1 itself. I mean, the black kind of stands out and contrasts, whether you like that or not. But overall, it fit really well. It was nice. You could possibly 3D print one yourself if you really wanted to change the color of it. But pop the USB-C back on with the four screws. They weren't in there that secure, but they're, they're not coming out. I have shaken it around a bit. And then you just press the fan itself into the side. That, that's definitely not going anywhere, that fits perfectly. Then you just plug the wires in to that USB-C adapter at the top. And then on the other side, you use this pretty cool piece that you can actually wire the RGB fan for, uh, the RGB light, sorry, for the nozzle all the way up the side. And then you can plug those into power and to the top as well. You'll notice there's a couple of extra um, power ports on there. Well, one extra power port, and I'll get to show you that when we install the Nomi 3D in just a second. So, that's all installed. It looks fairly nice. I wish the, the cables, like the red and black cables, that could be neatened up. I could probably tidy it up if I printed my own adapter or see what else the, the community has made, but I haven't had a look. Then you just connect to the Wi-Fi. Once you've powered the printer back on, you connect to the Wi-Fi signal that the actual cooler makes itself. Find your printer to it, it's a fairly easy process, and then you have access to all of the settings. These are just set and forget, if you power off the printer and turn it back on again, you never have to do this again, but you do have the option just to reconnect to the Wi-Fi signal that the BQ products give off themselves, so you could go back and change it if you wanted to, but nobody else could just log into these and change them whenever they want. This is only if you've set it because you bind it to your printer and your Wi-Fi. But overall, pretty cool interface. It means you can update it easily. There were no updates at the time of this recording. But look at this. I kept it on rainbow, obviously. It's the RGB cooler. That's it's what's going to be eye-catching at shows when I have this out on the table. And God, it just looks cool. Next, we'll be unpacking the Pandanomi 3D. 
this contains two boxes. So one is just the cover and one is the 3D version. So you can get a 2D version of this that just has a flat screen, but they've given me the Las Vegas Sphere inspired dome version. It included a rubber duck. You don't have to actually install that. It's just something you've thrown in. This one comes with a lot of cables. So when you're installing it, pay attention, especially if you get the cooler. I'll show you that in a second. So you get the front cover, which is like this frosted plastic look. And then you also get this half dome. Make sure you clean this. Make sure you don't smudge it like I did because I did have to reinstall it and clean it up a bit. But it just clips onto the front cover. You can see me giving it one more clean because I already installed this one time and it just looked blurry. Uh, then you just clip the screen onto it. Make sure you peel the screen cover off of that. Try not to touch it at all. But that fits in securely. And even if you were worried, then you can just install the plastic shield that they have over it. This is a bit tricky to remove if you needed to. Note that there's a clip on the side that you need to push in. They do know this in the instructions, I just didn't read it. But once it's in, it's securely installed. I had to take off the front cover of mine, which sucks because I had the BB-8 on it, but now I will have more options, especially with the screen being round, to upload some BB-8 GIFs that I'll show you in a second that you could do. You'll note here that I installed the what is the wrong cable if you have the cooler? This one's meant to be installed on the AMS slot. So now that the A1 and A1 Mini can have two AMSs, this would actually make a difference. So I did unplug this. Unplug this, again, it's a, it's a black and red cable. It sucks that it doesn't look as nice as the other cables, but this actually plugs into the Panda cooler power, which takes from the USB-C port to the back. Overall, I do think it's nicer and it's not a waste of an AMS slot. It just plugs right in. There's a little bit of slack, but I think it could be cleaned up or if you just got some sleeves over it. But once it's plugged in, it's plugged in securely. You power on the printer and like with the cooler, you can just connect to the Wi-Fi network that this emits, bind your printer, and then you'll have all of the settings there. You can see the design there, very Las Vegas Sphere inspired. I didn't actually change it. I think one day I will go through and make it Star Wars themed, but it's like 10 gifts that you would have to make. So I've made it display percentages and GIFs alternately. They change like every 15 seconds or so. You get a print on so I can actually see useful information on it. And for when I have it out on shows, people will note that there's a face. But I'll leave you here to just look at how it looks in the dark. Overall, I think these changes are purely aesthetic. BQ do say that it caused the motor by like 15 degrees, but not that I had any issues beforehand. If you're going to buy these, don't expect any print quality increases. Just expect your printer to look a bit cooler and be a bit more useful with the screen. Thanks for BQ for the sending these out. I will have, the uh, will have the links for them in the description, so feel free that you can check out their other products. They do loads of stuff for all of the Bamboo range and more. Let me know if you've checked out of any of BQ's products or any ones that you would like me to check out, and maybe we'll get them for any of Bamboo's um, printer range, and I'll see what we can do. Maybe we just get more for the A1, and we just see how much we can deck this thing out, make it more appealing to shows. I do think that if... Either you're just a bit of a nerd and you want to customize your printer or whether you do go to fairs and comic cons and shows yourself. I do think this is going to be a way that you can get your printer to stand out like 100%. People already come over to my printer because it looks like Princess Leia, but this will definitely be more eye catching than it was before. Thanks for watching the video. Make sure you subscribe and like if you have enjoyed it and check out my links in the description for Patreon and more than that. Thanks for watching. See you next time.